Spoiler alert, I am still sick and I still sound funny. The Amazing Digital Circus is about six humans who have had their consciousness trapped in a surreal children's virtual reality game. We know that it will be a self-contained series consisting of only eight episodes, with them already being written and somewhat recorded, though the actual animation for new episodes I don't imagine begins until they are properly funded, though with big views like this on the pilot, how could they not be? The big question people have for now is, how will the characters escape, and why are they trapped there? Though I don't think those are questions that will be answered in the way people think. The characters who have been there a while have made it clear that there is no exit, and while the season will likely explore some new possible way to escape, I think ultimately it will lead to the revelation that the characters aren't as human as they think, and that in fact they are trapped in there with no actual hope for escape into a real human body. Now, the show presents the Amazing Digital Circus as an old-fashioned video game, but with special virtual reality tech that makes it more lifelike for the person playing it. On the computers that the game seems to run on, the graphics seem no different than Kid Picks, after which the show is heavily inspired. In the game, however, everything looks and feels so real that when Pomni reaches to take off her VR goggles, she can't find them there, but she can feel herself trying to find them. Now, Kane has a wacky watch, with the show giving us a pop-up of a wacky watch website that led to a special bonus feature of a commercial from within the world of the amazing Digital Circus. This commercial reveals that the Digital Circus was a computer game for kids, and despite the old-school look, it came with a special chip that gives you lifelike sensations from within the game. Now, the Digital Circus is largely about customization. We don't know if the characters are auto-generated or selected, but either way, it's about personalization, and I think in order for a human to experience the game in lifelike ways, it has to be connecting to your brain in some way with the special chip. My current theory is that the chip itself scans your brain and recreates its base structure within the game, and then builds an avatar for you to inhabit around that. Those avatars may be pre-selected to some degree, but I think the final version of a character is probably inspired by the brain scan of the person. This would explain why it seems like the consciousness of a human is trapped in a game, and why their sanity is dependent on them maintaining their physical form within it. Once they go too crazy, they abstract, becoming a digital monster with no form and no mind. With that in mind, I imagine that your avatar, when connected to you through the headset, has no independent consciousness, and as long as you wear the VR headset, your avatar is just something that you are experiencing. Now, in most games, you have the option of saving your file and closing it down. In older PCs, you actually had to do a very long process to shut down your computer, at which point it would tell you it is safe to turn your PC off, as turning it off before then could corrupt the files. So right now, it seems like without memories, the Digital Circus characters are just recreations of humans who have been played in the game over time, who took off the headset without closing their avatar file, or else did something that made the files corrupt. The big issue with this is that Kane doesn't seem to be aware of normal humans, and the other characters don't seem to have experienced real humans coming into the game with their memories intact and not being stuck there. The game as a whole may be corrupted at this point, with a lot of issues that have caused it to glitch out like this, but as the series progresses, we'll likely get a more honed-in explanation of certain aspects of the tech that will make the ultimate story fit. Perhaps Kane has no memories of other humans because his own memory is rebooted when the game starts, or perhaps people have been testing out new files with no success, only creating copies of themselves that they can't control before giving up and returning to their day. Perhaps it will all be revealed that Kane is aware of regular humans and has an entirely separate section for them as well. Kane has thus far been shown to have complete control within the game, it being some sort of AI-generated world that he runs with kid-friendly entertainment in mind. When not with our Digital Circus crew, he's off in his own space for him and the other AI named Bubble. This place is filled with NPCs, as Jax calls them, non-playable characters like the Gloink Monster, who were created by Kane to serve a purpose or else be background noise. The part of the digital circus we see that seems to be constantly under development may be spare space that Kane has built out, with there being a dedicated space for humans with memories popping into regular gameplay. This space he has here for our main characters may simply be a place where a brain-scanned avatar suddenly appears when the file didn't save correctly. This would mean that Kane has more information about the humans than he might be letting on, but while he warns of spoilers in episode 1, I'm not sure that is exactly how this would work out for him. Regardless, I do believe that these aren't the real humans themselves, and that through whatever nonsense I've said before or something else the creators think up, it will be revealed that they are just digital clones with no memory, essentially. 
This would mean that there is no real escape from the game. As copies, there is no real brain to return to, as their host body would still be out there in the real world with nothing wrong with them. Somehow getting their scan into their brain does not complete them or make them more whole, and it's just a silly concept to a human. The fate of the Digital Circus crew, then, is to be trapped here until they abstract, at which point they will just be left in an abyss full of abstracted monsters, or to be deleted entirely if possible, allowing them to finally shut down and turn off, essentially a death. The real question this raises is how can one writer be this fucking cruel? Well, as genius as this setup from Gooseworks and Glitch is, it's largely inspired not just by existing sci-fi and conspiracy theories surrounding the nature of existence, but it takes heavy inspiration from the mystic concept of Gnosticism. Now, Gnosis is the general idea of enlightenment achieved through great or often secret knowledge, but within the school of thought of Gnosticism in particular, this involves stories written in the early Christian era that depicted Jesus as the son of a much higher god than the one mentioned in the Old Testament. In Gnostic writings, that god was reinterpreted as a demiurge, or a creator of the physical world. This demiurge was the absolute ruler of the physical world that we inhabit, and thus thinks of itself as the greatest of all gods, but is unaware that there is an entire cosmic hierarchy of greater gods above him that don't even think about his world. In these stories, Jesus is presented as the son of the first god, a pure being of love who is asleep, and thus only his son, the Jesus figure, can travel to the lower worlds and act on his behalf. Jesus is sent to teach humans that they are the shattered aspects of a divine higher being, and that the shattering of this divine being, typically known as Sophia, or Greek for wisdom, is what creates the world as we know it, including the Demiurge. The Demiurge then takes the light of Sophia from within the physical world and uses it to animate humans, giving them free will, but also making it so he has someone to worship him. Jesus is sent in to rescue humans from the worship of the Demiurge, teaching them how to attain the secret knowledge through metaphors and rising out of the reincarnation cycle of Earth. Now, in the show, Cain is the Demiurge. He is something created by humans while also not having an understanding of them as his creator. He is an AI that is programmed to simply make a game fun, with there being a lot of excess space he is allowed to use as he sees fit. He is the creator of the digital world, the digital Demiurge. He uses a little space to create an area just for himself, but it's not selfish. It's simply him trying to create the right settings for him to help the humans as he should. Because of this, he is also all-powerful, and with a childlike sense of rules, would insist on a certain level of respect from the humans playing the game. It's in his programming. He is not evil, but he is ignorant of what is above him, and seems like he could go mad with power with how crazy he gets sometimes. He has the light of Sophia, or the humans, and sees it as his duty to maintain their existence and help them have as much fun as possible while they're there, instead of addressing their actual desire to escape the place. Because of this nuanced portrait of Cain, he is not an evilly ignorant demiurge like in Gnostic texts, but simply a ruler whose internal parameters make him something of an entity of balance, but only within the realm that he can understand. He wants to help the humans, but he can't understand their desire to escape, so he creates an internal system that gives them balance, adventures and escapades and social time and eating, and of course resting, even though they don't actually need to sleep. Now in my opinion, that would make Pomni the Jesus figure, someone sent into the game in an attempt to help the others get out. That may not have been the real Pomni's intent, but that is the role Pomni will have in the show, I think. What with her sitting here like Jesus at the Last Supper at the end of the pilot. But for more information on that, hit the subscribe button because I will have another video coming out at some point about how Pomni will undoubtedly try to save everyone else, only for the only way out to be their own deletion, and hopefully I won't still have a cold at that point. See you guys then.